This a, I'll, I'll leave you this one. It's a bigger shot. Okay. Uh, and Leonard Dobart, who had the uh, the K88 with the 421 Pontiac, he had me order a car from Lefty, which was a single engine fuel car. This would be Lefty Motors. Lefty Motors. Back. Thank you. Yeah, Lefty Speed Shop in in uh, Pico Rivera, and this is the car that he sent us. And he sent it on a uh, yellow freight truck. And the bottom rail got damaged. And I called him and I said, what do we do? He says, is, how bad is it? I said, it's just got a dent in it. The tube's straight. Everything lines up all the way it's supposed to. But it's got a dent in the tubing. He says, put it all together and bring it out. I'll fix it. Sounds good to me. So Marina Mongeau had this. This is a 339 with a 471 and a two-holer. An ISKI 505, 15%. Ran 828, 181 or two right in there. We drove it out. We put it on the trailer. And... You have to understand that Wayne and I spent hours and hours on the phone with Lefty. We call him on Monday night and uh, say, "What did you do?" He's, "Well, I ran Fontana and we won this, or I went with Goss and Yates to the so and so." And and he said, "How'd you guys do?" Then we got rained out. And that, uh, after about six straight weeks of that, yeah, he says, "Why don't you move to California?" <laughs> he says, "It doesn't rain." I says, "Well." Let me think about that. So we took this car out to him. We took it apart. We took the engine out, turned it over, and uh, he fixed that piece of the chassis right there on the spot. We put it back together. Just, we got here on a Thursday. He worked on it on Friday. We went, we went to Lyons on Saturday night. We qualified. There, it was an eight-car show at the time. We qualified and raced... Lefty, first round. Lefty had a, an unblown single engine Chevy, but it was one of the 400 inch motors, so it was would have been an A fueler because of the rules. And he did a wheel stand. When he came down, broke the front end off, so we won that race. The second round, we raced a Schubert and beat him head up, running 815. We had livened her up and she ran good. Mm. And uh, uh, I don't know if he had problems or not. I just know that we, we ended up winning. And we were going to race Moody in the Zuchu Moody bat car for the money. And uh, Lenny was a, he used a lot of And uh, he, so he, he wired himself pretty good in between uh, uh, the, that and the final round and red lighted. <laughs> and uh, it turned out that had he not red lighted, we would have won. And at that time, nobody from out of town had ever won uh, Top Eliminator at Lions. The first to win a, the Top Eliminator was the Greek, and that was much later. And this is about what year? This is 60, this is July of 63. Hmm. Okay. So he, he and I talked, and uh, he said, uh, you really ought to move out here. I says, well, if it don't rain, it sounds like the thing to do. So I went back, and I had interest in a go-kart. I had interest in that dragster. I had uh, uh, a lot of stuff and a girlfriend and all of that, and so... I called Lefty and, and I said, I'm, I'm coming to California. I'll be out there the 1st of October. Brace yourself. So uh, he said, okay, come on. So I sold all my stuff. When I left New Orleans, I had my I had a 57 Chevy hardtop and a uh, 
a stack of clothes and a box of tools and fifteen hundred dollars that I had saved and gathered after I sold all my stuff. It's October, it says September 27th or 8th. The Dodgers are playing the World Series. I'm driving to California to change my life. And uh, the Dodgers win the series on my way out. And I show up at Lefty's on Thursday afternoon. The year? 63. And I said, I'm here, what are we going to do? He said, well, we're going racing this weekend. I said, sounds good to me. I said, but I'm, I'm going to have to go to work on at, at some point. So uh, he said, don't worry about that. I'll take care of you. So we go to Fontana. And he's running Ernie Chavez's car. That was a, an orange fuel car that he had built. And Ward was driving it, Jim Ward. Gene Townley was the helper. I, of course, jumped right in there. And the guys that hung around the shop, a couple of them worked there part-time, was the Warden, Lewis, and Cole bunch that ran the, their roadster. They had a lefty-built roadster that really ran good, like was the equivalent of the Pure Hell at, in the, at that point. I think Pure Hell was just getting a hold at that point. And boy, a Pennington was the bad guy with the Bantam with a Chrysler in it. He was the bad guy in the class. And Gabby Bleeker was uh, uh, had a Bantam as well in the Chicago area. Those were the three bad cars. And uh, so we went to Fontana, and I think Ward got beat second round or something like that. And he introduced me to everybody he could introduce me to. He just kind of walked me around and said, this is so-and-so. Now, you got to understand that I was a drag race detective at that point, kind of like you. I knew all the names. I even knew most of the faces because I read drag news and see the faces. Mm -hmm. Remember that drag news with oh, yeah. all the drivers on it? I knew every one of those guys before I ever met them. <coughs> and so I just, I kind of fell in with all of these guys. And he introduced me to Gene, Gene Adams, and, and uh, who was another one of my heroes. And uh, we just spent the evening going from pit to pit and watching the races and doing that. And we stopped by, and Mickey was running, I think he was running a, uh, uh, a dragster with... Mickey Thompson? Yeah, with uh, uh, Roger Wolford, if I recall. And Kenny Drosbeck was there. And he ran Mickey's shop for him. And uh, Lefty says, I would like to meet a, meet a friend of mine. It's Don Prieto. He says, you got any work down there? Meaning at Mickey's. And he said, yeah, send him down. So we finished racing that day. We went to San Fernando the next day. And then Monday morning, I showed up at Mickey's and interviewed with uh, Drosbeck and what have you and filled them full of lies <laughs> and uh, got a job. Went to work the next day in the shop when I got there. Cliff Harrison ran the, the machine shop. He was partners with Bob Brooks who ran the piston department. Uh, Paul Nicolini was welding chassis on the, on the floor mm -hmm. in the uh, in the back. Yeah. Uh, Fritz Voigt, one of the most famous drag racers of all times back then, uh, was uh, foreman of the shop. Wayne Ferguson was running the inventory of the, the selling the speed equipment for where they, they shipped it out. Uh, he ran a modified roadster, soon to be partners with Gene Mooneyham. Mooneyham was the master machinist and he was working on the Pontiac, Hemi Pontiac project. He had the mill set up and grinding pieces and he put me in charge of making the rocker arms, the aluminum rocker arms for that engine and he showed me the machines and put me out in this little shed by myself and I'm drilling and grinding and what have you. And um, up front there's two guys in the 
in the uh, retail store. Ronnie Rapp and Jack Yule. Wow. So I get to meet all of these guys. All of them have huge reputations in my world because I've been following them in right. the magazines and in the newspapers and what have you. Right. And on the phone and, and Lefty would tell us, you know, stories endless. Lefty was a good storyteller and and uh, it was just, I was like beside myself. I don't know if you've ever had an out-of-body experience where you see yourself doing something. Mm -hmm. That was kind of like it was. I walked around like I was, this was happening and it, but it was happening to somebody else because I was watching it too. <laughs> you know, it was really a strange experience. But it was terrific because these were all people that not only did they, um, uh, not only were they friendly, but they accept, accepted me because they had figured out early on as I talked with them that I had obviously been paying attention to what was going on in the drag race world because I was conversant in most everything that they uh, were conversant in and were doing every day in their lives. And so it was, it was like arriving. This was really something. The other connection that I had was Don Madden because a lot of the stuff we ran you know, on the street back there, we used Howard's camp. Jake liked Howard stuff. He was an ISKI dealer, but he liked the way Howard did things, and he bought a lot of stuff from Howard. And so I looked up Madden as soon as I got the opportunity, and we became fast friends. And by December, October, November, December, I had purchased the uh, Sandoval car from them. Because they had decided uh, to build a new car, and Madden, they wanted to run Endle. They hated the Scott because they didn't understand it. And uh, Madden said, "Let them go. We'll, we'll run together." So I, I bought the car, and like I think I told you earlier, the car wasn't ready. Bob Sorrell was building both the chassis and the body. That was the scoundrel. Yes. And Gablich was the driver of the existing car, and that's this car here. Yep. And that's the previous Sandoval Brothers car? That's the first Sandoval Brothers car. It's a woody car that was a kit, and they put it together. They welded the brackets for the rear end, and, you know, they finished the car. Woody sent him a chassis and an axle. And they finished the car, so that's why he never claimed this as one of his cars, because <clears throat> he put he puts together a uh, a list of cars, and it, this is not included, hmm. which was fine with me. And uh, each day when I was working at Mickey's, each day I'd go in a different direction with a different guy. I'd go over to Mooneyham's and watch him work on the on the. 34 that he was getting ready to sell to Emmett White and they had the the, uh, the Woody chassis already there. Uh, I get introduced, I go down to Jocko's with Cliff Harrison and get introduced to Cruzy. Cruzy is bending tin on the Harrison, uh, Cliff Harrison and, and uh, uh, what was the guy's name, Galt? There were three partners. Haverson was one of them. Was Haverson's motor, and that was Cruzy's second professional body. The first one he did for the the hard cam shifter in in uh, Arizona. They called and tried to get Jocko to do the body, and he said, "I don't have time. I'm working on this streamliner." Doug, you want to do this body for money? Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> 